fact, I think he's actually the best. I've not seen a performance from a midfield player to his level in this World Cup. He's the standout midfield player. He just needs to bring it to the table now for this game against France. Good morning from Doha and welcome to the latest edition of World Cup Confidential. Coming up over the next 20 minutes, you will hear Dominic King tell us that there's an apprehension running through the French camp ahead of their World Cup quarter-final meeting with England on Saturday. Martin Keown will tell us why he thinks Jude Bellingham is on his way to being the standout midfielder in this tournament. While Martin Samuel argues that this England team doesn't get the respect or the credit it deserves from within its own country. So, Dom, we'll, we'll come to you first. Um, you okay. were at the French training camp yesterday, um, yes. speaking to some of their players, speaking to some of their journalists. And um, One French journalist told me yesterday that, that, that they are not as confident in their team as we think they maybe should be, given the way they've gone through the tournament so far. What was the impression that you were picking up from actually being there? Well, there was a very interesting answer from Ibrahima Kanate about, um, he was asked about Kylian Mbappe and, uh, you know, his influence and whatnot and how um, England seemed to be preoccupied with him. And he made the point about um, Harry Kane. He was asked about Harry Kane and uh, what's it like playing against him. And he said, well, there's no point concentrating just on, on Harry Kane because there's Foden, there's Saka, there's... Um, Bellingham, there's all kinds of other people that can cause France France problems. Um, so I I got the impression there is they're, they're as mindful as of the threat of of England as England are as the threat of France. Um, and I, I, there's there's certainly a lot more respect and um, I'd say apprehension as well um, in, in France because it, it, this is probably the biggest test they've faced so far as well. Martin Samuel. Um... Do do it. Does the England team present a different face to the world these days? And what I mean by that is a a more attacking face, a more dangerous face than maybe it did even at the last European Championships. Well, I think they've probably got more respect than they get in their own country, where every single time England win a game, it's because the opposition are useless or um, injured or not worthy in in, in some way. That's whereas, just me who says that. Uh, whereas. Um, if you go, if you if you look abroad, people would have respect for beating Senegal three 0 They're the African champions, and we would have respect if someone else beat Senegal three 0 If France had come into this result having beat the African champions three 0 everyone would be saying, "Oh, they're dangerous! Look at that last result!" You know, because it's us. It's so you know, um, Mane was out, and they were missing this one, and they were missing that one. And, you know, they've got lucky again, and they're always lucky, and and all of this. So, yeah, I, I, I do think, I, I do think that outside of these hours, there's far more respect for this current English uh, team than uh, than there was before. And in, and in answer to about France and whether they've got reason to be concerned, well, yeah, they're playing a team that's had eight different goal scorers. I think the highest scores in the tournament uh, going into this game and have kept three consecutive clean sheets. France haven't kept a clean sheet against anybody yet. So if I was France, if, if you were the French manager, you'd be looking at England and think you're playing a good team here. Martin, Kian, when you, when you see our team, when you look at our team, is that, is that what you see? And do you see a greater threat um, from England than perhaps we've had in other England teams going back to your time? This is a very good England team. <clears throat> there's there's no doubt about that. I know what Martin's saying. Uh, I don't see it that way. I, he was creating a bit of doubt about how we look at ourselves and we're seen around the rest of the world and how we may be the journalists here and former players look at this England team. We're very much aware this is a quality England team, but it's growing all the time. It's very young. Foden, I thought, was magnificent the other night. There are so many good performances. It's very difficult to... You almost miss somebody out. You know, it's interesting, the goalkeeper, Pickford, he pulled off a blinding save mm. early in the game, which we want from your goalkeeper. OK, it, was a, it wasn't a good start for us, but we showed that we had a goalkeeper who could deal with it if it happens. Um, we talked, didn't we, the other night about if England start badly against France, they'll get punished, and they know what they're up against now. This is a, this is a step up in class. They've got great players as well, World Cup mm. holders. So I'm, this is, could be an epic game. But we are now, for the first time in, in, in my living memory since I've stopped playing or, you know, since this, the 66 years, we've got a team here that can go in and win this World Cup. 
And I feel if this is a this game, France, England, whoever wins this game now goes through to the finals to play probably Brazil. And I don't want to discount anybody else and be disrespectful, but that's what I can take from this tournament so far. England are right up there with a great opportunity. We just have to deal with what's ahead of us. And we know the challenge that it brings. So you, you're saying that you think if we beat France, then we, then we will also beat whoever it is in the, in the uh, semi-final? I do. I think, is it Portugal, Morocco? Um, I feel I watched the Portuguese play the other night. Um, fantastic performance, but they were just finding their way. We're just a few steps ahead of them right now. Um, the rhythm in our team was better than Portugal. Yes, I think they, they, they it was emphatic, 6-1 but they almost fell into that victory. They got an embarrassment of riches, but we're ahead of them. But we have to prove it by beating France. Martin, if, if you look at um, our games so far, the four games that we've played, the one thing I would say is that apart from the Iran game, which was obviously an incredible start, 6-2, um, <clears throat> we haven't played, we haven't contributed to the 90-minute performance. Um, the, the performance against America was pretty sterile. Um, the first half against Wales was patchy and dull um, and the first half an hour against Senegal was uh, lifeless they had the two best chances so Martin Samuel do you think that we are still waiting for that 90 minute performance and will we need one against France? Uh, well I, I, I'm not sure what a 90 minute performance actually is if you if you know what I mean because what team plays um, at that full throttle, dominating everything for 90 minutes? You know, there's, we're in the quarterfinals of a World Cup. We, we haven't, you know, we, we're not playing some non-league team in the third round and you put the reserves out and, and you know, you you know you can weather the first five minutes and then away you go. It, it's, you know, I don't know what this 90-minute performance is. A 90-minute performance to me is when the other lot of the better team, you don't concede a goal, well, that was the Senegal game, um, and then you, you go on and win the match yourself in the, in the periods of the game in which in which you're dominating. I don't see too many matches ever won by a team that dominates from the first minute to to the ninetieth. Even Switzerland scored against Portugal whilst conceding six. So I I, I, I don't get the, the the idea that you you've got to crush a team like ants. I mean, we're playing France. The next round, we may play Portugal or Morocco. The next round is going to be Brazil, Argentina, Holland. You know, I mean, Croatia, they're not mugs. You don't, you don't, you don't take a game for 90 minutes against any team that is in the World Cup I would say beyond the group so beyond Iran, you could argue you could maybe dominate from from the get go. But even then, they scored twice. You know, Iran aren't a, the worst team that you, you'll ever see. I don't get that. I don't think team. I don't think matches are won by dominating for ninety minutes. I think they're won by dominating in and, and affecting the match in the period in which you are on top. Dom, Dom is grinning all over his face here. I think he's quite enjoying watching you kind of dissemble my argument. Kind of. Oh, it's wonderful! It's wonderful, it's wonderful to hear. On it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Dom I think waking I, up. I, you know, I do. I have seen teams play for ninety minutes. I mean, Martin maybe have been watching too much West Ham. Uh, Dom, um, name one. Name one. Hmm? Name I've one. Seen, I've seen Manchester name City. I've, I've seen Manchester City be the best team from start of a game to the end of a game. I've seen I've seen Liverpool do it. But, what, but I, I, when it's what, outmatched later, when it's when it's when it's a complete mismatch, yeah, they, they you know I've I've seen them do that too. But in a mismatch, not in the sort of matches you get at a World Cup. Well I would I would suggest and I'll say this to you and, and to Dom, I would suggest that if you think there were, there weren't alarm bells or anything to be concerned about in that first half an hour against Senegal and how Maguire was giving the ball oh. away when we weren't particularly getting out of our own half and how Kane didn't see the ball right. and Jordan Pickford had to make a very, very good save. Now, if you didn't know, Martin said, Martin Keown said on the show earlier this week that if we did, if we'd done that against France, we'd have been one or two down. Yeah. I, that concerns me, Don. Can I speak? Yes, please. They are the champions of Africa. They are the champions of Africa. They are... I thought... <coughs> I thought they that first that half an hour was... They weren't that good. Oh, they were... They, they tested England in a way that England hadn't been tested before. And by that, I mean they played a completely different style that they, they, they wouldn't come up against in Europe. 
They played a um, completely different formation. They were happy to break the game up. They were happy to frustrate them. They were asking completely different questions. And if they would have scored the first goal uh, without Pickford making that great save, the game would have been totally, totally different because they knew exactly what they wanted to do. Yeah, I it thought... It would have been I, totally different because they lost 2-0. Martin, uh, Keith, oh, man. Man. <laughs> Do when you look at we talked about Bellingham quite a bit the other day. Martin's written about Martin Samuel's written about Bellingham in the paper today. We'll talk about that in a minute. What will France will France have a plan for him? Do you think, or will they be more intent on just imposing themselves on us? Well, they what they do essentially they're midfield. They they slightly different to us. We sit with one sitter, Rice, and you've got Bellingham and Henderson either side. We can become a two as well. And that is sort of our development. But they play with Chumini and um, uh, Rab uh, Rab Rabio alongside each other. And then Griezmann, who's been, I think actually Griezmann is the unsung hero of their team. I think he's mm. magnificent. I think since Conte has been out mm. internationally, he does a whole lot more for the team defensively. So I don't think they will really. Um, they've got the two sitters there so they can collect the forward runners that come into, the, into their way from, from England. Uh, that the game will be won and lost in that midfield area. Who can actually get control of the game in the way that they play, and can they deal with our runners from midfield? Henderson gets through so much work, and I think finally he's getting the credit that he deserves. He's really important messages to the players. He talked about um, his goal just before that. There'd been an opportunity for Bellem to cross it at an earlier attack, and he didn't actually do it. And he went in his ear and said, "Look, next time, look edge of the box." You no, know, there's good communication here with these players. There's respect and we've got real quality. So they need to worry about us. But what we mustn't do is switch off for Griezmann when, when they get the ball back because he's always in and around an assist. I know it's easy to look at Mbappe, but Giroud is there kind of like Harry Kane. There's lots of similarities in the front three with the way that their movement, if you look at Saka um, and Foden, our two wide players, Dembele now is coming into real form. I had a good look at him yesterday on some videos. Giroud comes deep, doesn't he? Like he's the backboard for everything, a bit like Harry Kane does. And then they flood into those areas as England are doing. So I think we've looked at them as the benchmark and we try to copy them a little bit in the final third. So this mm. will be a kind of like the almost the pupil against uh, the master, can we call them? Because they are the dominant team in Europe and the world right now, the holders. But we can wrestle it away from them because they don't have the strength in depth to actually take us on. It might be that it's not the team we start with, it's one we finish with. I don't think their bench is nearly as strong as we are. Martin, uh, Samuel, you've written in the, in the, the mail today about Bellingham um, mm. and, and com making comparisons with, with Paul Gascoigne. And your kind of conclusion is that is that Bellingham's probably got a greater chance of having a, a longer career simply because of the personality that he is as, as opposed to the personality that Gaza was when he was coming through just talk us through that that theory a little bit yeah it's it's not it wasn't so much about them as footballers it was about the mm. idea that one is a man and, and, and one is a boy um when when they have these breakthroughs at the world cup and 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 it's not that's not you know because uh, Paul was 23 uh in 1990 so but he's not the man um, he was the boy, and he always was a boy. I mean, Martin uh, would have would have played with him and against him, and uh, and everything, and and that's that's what he was. He, he you know, and um, there's no comparison with Jude Bellingham, who's this 19 year old that that acts as if he's the team captain some of the time. I mean, uh, one of the things that I mentioned was this little vignette from the Senegal game where Harry Kane had gone over, and Harry Kane's on the floor, or he's either been kicked or tripped or, or whatever. And it's Bellingham that goes over to the England captain of 79 caps experience or whatever and sort of picks him up and pats him on the back and says, come on, mate, you know, we go again and all of this. And it was a sort of complete reversal of that, uh, of what you would expect to see with Cunning going over to the young player and, and, and jeering him up in the way through the game. He's captain, he's captain Bushy Dortmund as a teenager. I mean, to captain a Champions League club in a, in a major European league, um, as a teenager in a foreign language. I mean, the faith they must have in him, the maturity that he has shown. Paul Gascoigne is uh, possibly my favourite English player, certainly, that, that I have seen. But that was that was never his destiny. And, and from the very first moment, 
he looked at the level of celebrity that was around Paul and thought, "This I can't think of anybody that is less suited for this to happen to than than this guy because he he lived on his nerves the whole time." That, uh, fearlessness, of, that fearlessness of youth that you talk about is, is brilliant mm -hmm. to watch on a football field, and it's certainly brilliant to see in Bellingham. Dom. Um, Bellingham, not surprisingly, has been coveted and watched by a whole host of European clubs. Um, Liverpool are one of the ones that have been mentioned. Obviously, that's that's right in the middle of your of your patch. Is there is there is there anything in that? Do we think? Oh, uh, I mean, um, Jurgen Klopp spoke about him in the summer, um, and he talked about uh, there was a quote. It was it was during pre season when he said something. The, the price is the only the only reason that. You know, we're not going for him at the minute. He, he, he knew how much um, it would cost, and obviously the circumstances with Dortmund and having just sold Haaland. Um, I, th I think uh, Belling did a, uh, an interview with um, the Times at, at the end of April or beginning of May, and he was he, he was quite firm that he was staying at, um, in Germany for the next twelve months, and you know he's developing brilliantly. Um, Everyone's going to want him. There was there was some quotes from Nasser Al Khalifa, um, the Paris Saint Germain's chairman, yesterday saying that you know they're in for him. Um, everybody's going to want him. It's it's it's, it's going to be um, he's going to have the pick of where, where he can go, really, um, and it'll come down to money. Or I think money and um, opportunity. But um, you know, Liverpool will be right in there. I'm, I'm not saying anything anything out of the ordinary, but you know he's. I think he'd be a flagship signing for Liverpool. I think he's exactly the type of thing that they would need for the next next ten years. He could he could just be transformative. Um, I just think he's a, he's he's an amazing player. And the things that I hear about him as well, in terms of his, you know, you just talked about his maturity, and he's um, he's not one of these teenagers that'll go and sit and play for hours on a PlayStation or things like that. You'd more likely find him going to the gym for a couple of hours. Um, Going speaking to coaches, going list, working on games, watching clips. He's very, very um, wise, wise ahead of his time. And that, as Martin says, that's the thing that's going to give him the chance to be absolutely top draw. Ian, he strikes me as being uh, a very determined young man. He, he's driven, and I think you know it's very important as a player that you you have to take your moment when it's there. You know, you <laughs> you only get that one opportunity. We know there might be an amazing career ahead of him. Um, and I think Henderson, Jordan Henderson, will is a big communicator. I think he'll message back to the manager, Jurgen. We've got a special individual here. You've got to take him because I think it's important to have as many. You look at the Premier League. You've got to have that sort of nucleus of English players. Um, I know he's been abroad now, but he's be perfect for Liverpool to bring back into that midfield. It might even cost Henderson his place, but I think he'll do the right thing for Liverpool in recommending him to go there. But we know we can see the talent's obvious. Um, uh, it's such a balance and a drive. He powers through midfield, and we're all looking for comparisons. I was thinking about Brian Robson when he scored that goal against France early in the World Cup. Do you remember back in the day? Mm -hmm. Bellingham reminds me of that. He just charts a buccaneering run, but he's so balanced. And then he has the intelligence and the skill set to pick out a pass. So we know we've got a special player here. In fact, I think he's actually the best. I've not seen a performance from a midfield player to his level in this World Cup. He's the standout midfield player. He just needs to bring it to the table now for this game against France. If um, if there were to be a bidding war for, for Bellingham, I'm not sure how Liverpool would get on with that, I suppose. Um, but um, it's interesting to see what happens with him. Martin, um, Samuel, another England player who we haven't seen on the field for a while is uh, Raheem Sterling. He went home um, mm. after a break in it at uh, home in London. Talking to those papers that he may come back. Um, if he does come back, has he got a chance of getting back in this team? And and do we need him to come back? Well, you need good players. He's a good player. Mm. Um, so you always need good players. Uh, you need players that are in the right frame of mind. So that remains to be seen. And that uh, I don't think he would be in contention um, for this match because if he comes back, uh, they're talking about maybe coming back tomorrow. So he hasn't been part of the preparations this week. I would imagine there'll be very specific preparations for France. Mm. So it's not something you can just, you know, pick up off the back of a bag packet or whatever on Saturday morning and, um, and, and away you go. So I don't think he's in contention for this weekend. But then once he's back, once he's back with the group, um, 
Of course he's in contention. He's a, he's a very, very good player and he's an important player with the squad. He's a respected player with the squad. He's a senior player. So, absolutely. Absolutely, he's got still got a role to play at this World Cup. I don't think it's a role in the team, necessarily, on, on Saturday, but he's certainly got a role back here. Somebody who will have a role on Saturday and a, probably a very big role is Jordan Pickford, who will win his 50th cap. Uh, Dom, you've written about him, the Everton goalkeeper, in, in the paper today. Um, I, as Martin and I often have a joke about, said at the last World Cup that Jordan wouldn't be our goalkeeper by the time this one came around, but he is. He's made incredible strides uh, emotionally um, and, in, and in terms of his goalkeeping. But do we see a complete goalkeeper now, now Dom? We do, but uh, just to be, do, do you like just, you know, your views, are they just diametrically opposite to mine on everything, you know, the, the way you see football? Because it, it, there's just, you know, why, why, why would you have thought he wouldn't have been England's goalkeeper here? Well, what I, what I would say to you is that there is much to learn. Which only from, from what no, no, no I'll, 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 tell him who you thought would be. It's not, it's not that you didn't think Jordan Pickford would be, it's, it's who you thought would be. I that's I, the, I, I, that's I, the I, coach I, line. I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay. Okay. Can remember. So maybe Mark say, I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. It was Jack I'm going to Butler. say it. I'm going to say it. Then I'm going to run out of the room. It was Jack Butler, um, who I had well, down as, well, as you know. Yeah. This is the reason. That, this, is, but it's, this is half return. Jack this is Martin one of the reasons. This is one of the reasons I don't bet on horses. You know because uh, <laughs> you know they fall. They fall, and that one and that one fell. But just before we finish, Dom, is he the complete goalkeeper now? Uh, Jordan Pickford, because he, he looks to be. Yes, well, and in a beautiful little segue uh, about Jack Butland, um, he's actually the the um, the intro to the piece because Jordan made his debut against Germany in 2017 on the back of Jack Butland breaking his finger. So he might mm-hmm. have got to 50 caps quicker than, um, um, mm-hmm. it, it, or as quick as he has done. Uh, listen, I think, I think he's been outstanding for England. Uh, I think he's been outstanding for his club for... Two years, very calm, very dominant. Um, uh, I, I know him. Um, I know the type of frames, uh, frame of mind that he's in. Really confident. Um, I spoke to him at the beginning of the tournament, and he, he knew this night was coming. He, 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 he said 50 caps against France. He wouldn't tolerate the idea that England wouldn't be in this game. Um, and I don't think he's. Um, I don't think he's going. Thinking of going home on Saturday either. I think he's very determined to get his the first medal of his career here and he's um we, we do talk about all the attacking players and whatever but this England Jordan Pickford is as crucial to England as Harry Kane and Jude Bellingham in his in his own way uh, I think if England didn't have um him and, and what he does uh, they'd be a, a poorer side for it Martin Keel just before we finish Dom talks about people going home on on Sunday which nation do you think will be going home on, on Sunday? I'm going to put you on the spot. Who's going home? Massively, massively in the balance. It's, it's a really tough game. I, I I think we can do it. I don't have any worries that we can't do it. Mbappe is the one player that gives you... I mean, it's, it's absolutely terrifying when he gets the ball and runs at people. And we just hope he doesn't get a purple patch in the game. But if he doesn't, we can, we, we can win this game, yes. So I put us down as favourites. Well, a bit of positivity for Martin Keown is a good way to finish. Uh, maybe next time when we're on, we might find a, a subject on which we can all agree, but I'd be surprised. Um, thanks for being on, chaps. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you the same time tomorrow for the next edition of World Cup Confidential.